My name's Steve Pinto. Uh, as most of you know, I'm the Chief Executive of Wandsworth Chamber of Commerce. Today we have a presentation from the Pracy team who look after access self storage. This site at Mendip Road is, is uh, quite inspirational really. It will ch change the outlook of that whole area, um, which combined with a Criterion auction uh, room site, which is being developed by the, another company, The Collective, will bring a lot more vibrancy and footfall into this area. We'd love to get your feedback on, on how this, what you think of this scheme. And we are recording the meeting so that we can send it to people who haven't been able to attend. In particular, you know, I'm very keen for all the Battersea Reach businesses uh, to see what's happening. Really keen for them to get involved with this project and the project at the collective to get to know the people and to make the most of uh, the synergies and partnerships that will develop over the years. So that's enough from me. Uh, for now, I'd just like to hand over to the Access team and I'm going to ask Joe Ashton to uh, introduce himself and start this presentation. So Joe, over to you. Um, hello everyone. Uh, yes, my name is Joe Ashton. I work for uh, the business which is uh, overall is called Pracy Advisory, but it, within that group it has uh, access storage, it has hotels and other things. And um, uh, obviously the input today in discussion is around one of the access storage sites and I head up development. So we're looking at a number of sites across London um, to uh, try and provide these mixed use developments like Battersea with a mixture of storage, office and build to rent above it. And so um, we, we, we've been looking at a few of these. We'll come through it in the presentation, but that's, that's my background. And we're, we're looking to um, get a submission for this scheme in the autumn. And so, uh, yeah, pleased to meet you all today. And we can just run through the scheme and ask you, ask, um, you can ask questions. Um, Carlotta's just put the scheme up. So I'll tell you a little bit more about the business very quickly. So next, next one, Carlotta. So yeah, this is, if, for those of you who don't know, and forgive me if you know all about us, but um, it is a national business, but it's sort of London centric. Um, it's got 21 offices. Um, so it's about half a million square foot of workspace. And these are predominantly combined with the access storage, but some are bespoke um, specific office sites. Um, we've got 37 storage stores in London. Uh, we have 23 hotels. And on the bottom of this slide, you can see residential mixed use, which is the sort of emerging uh, business direction to, to give a diverse portfolio. And just to be clear, um, it's a family owned business. It's multi-generational and they're very much looking at London for the long term. So this is why a scheme like this with build to rent plays to that because they want to own and hold this site for many years to come uh, and want to manage it, operate it well and, and serve their businesses and community well. Um, and so that, that's their approach. Um, you may or may not be interest, uh, have a specific interest in it, but we, we do provide offices. Um, and if you didn't know about that, we can, uh, you, you can see on our other sites and these what we provide, but we can provide short-term lets, long-term lets, for small businesses, bigger ones. There's going to be about 10,000 square foot of office provided in this proposed new development. And it's very, it's a sort of flexible office space that you can use. Um, the benefit also, if you hadn't thought about it before, is that we, we have business, businesses that link it to the storage in the site. So, you know, we have small startup businesses where they need somewhere to store stock. Um, and we have a, a number of SMEs. Um, there's an example here of, uh, uh, a sous chef business over in Hornsey um, which started out as a new business and grew and grew and used the facility to grow what they needed in that actual facility and the staff are very flexible they created additional storage additional office space and the company grew so a lot of a number of times people can use the storage they can also use the office they can build they can store stock um, as they're starting up and it, it gives that great advantage of flexibility um, of tenure when you're starting out which is always tricky to know which direction your business is going to go um, and we can also provide other services so um, we can I mean there's just you know some detail on what they provide if you want on our website in terms of uh, the 24-hour security CCTV and f call call answering and mailboxes and we can provide virtual offices uh, and mailboxes 
Uh, here's some of our schemes around London. So Gillette Corner uh, over in uh, Middlesex, Hayes. Um, this was an office scheme we developed out in Hammersmith a few years ago, and that's now a, um, a fully up and running uh, pure office development. Next one. Um, and now we're going to talk to you a bit about this uh, other part of our business, which is I referred to, which is our mixed use development. We call it Access Your London. And what we're doing across a number of sites is um, taking an existing site like Battersea and redeveloping it to retain the storage, but above it, um, make it a better facility, better storage, combine some office, but then also bring in some residential. And then we can operate and manage the whole thing as one uh, uh, well-run development with multiple um, residential office and storage uses, which is, we think is quite a good way of running um, having a site. Uh, so that's a scheme we did in Ilford, which was um, got planning. I um, can't remember exactly now. We're just finalising some of the paperwork, but it's this year. And that was a 370 unit scheme over in Ilford um, near the Crossrail. Um, oh, gone the wrong way. Uh, we've got a scheme in Rains Park, which we're um, just talking to a building contractor at the moment. That's 130 residential units. That's near Wimbledon, for those who don't know Rains Park. Um, and that this is, we're trying to develop um, our own brand of this and, and how we run and operate it and create, create something that plays to access storage and, and very much about this sort of uh, how we run things properly with our hotel servicing background, with our access storage. So we, we, we can bring the servicing our customers from hotels through to storage, through to offices, and we're building up a brand that really uh, plays to uh, uh, all our strengths, really. And so I think at this moment, this is our site. So I think you will hopefully all know where it is. Uh, Carlotta, is it now for you? Do you want yes, to I can jump in. Scheme? Hello, everyone. I'm Carlotta and I'm the architect from Colorado Collins. Um, I will now jump in and talk about the, the scheme and our proposals on the site. And um, for those of you that don't know the exact location we're referring to is the site adjacent to the Battersea Reach development that currently hosts um, an access self-storage facility um, and is between, so this is York Road uh, on the south side um, and then Mendip Road are our main street facade. Um, and then we kind of have this uh, view towards the river and there's a park here to the north of our site as well, which is part of the Battersea Reach development um, that you can see. Um, then these are some some of the images so you know exactly what building we're referring to and the existing facility and actually how it the you know the frontages are, are not very active and actually in terms of creating an environment in its locality and bringing footfall it's not really doing very much as it currently sits although obviously providing quite a useful um, service by providing the, the self storage to, to the locals. Um, and here again, you can see some more images of that. So these are the views um, along the river. So actually we're just set back here. So there, and then you can kind of see that access to, towards the river there to that park here. And, and actually it's, it's, it's not very um, attractive and well located. Um, and then, so here, this is kind of some of our initial diagrams of you know how are we going to approach the site and what do we want to do and I think from the very start of this project our, our main goal has actually to be very generous on the ground floor and give back um, to the community on, on a site that is currently um, extremely restrictive where we have our loading bays and parking on the outside and it's actually all fenced um, and you have quite a slim uh, pathway as you can see on on here you can see you know that's the pavement and the rest of it although that is not a footprint it's actually a private so you can see here everything in red is actually not accessible um, and then the gray um, uh, highlight here is actually showing you the existing building footprint um, on the site and then on the right hand side to our propose what we've done is really pull back from our site boundaries to create a very generous ground floor amenity and open that up to residents um, and, and to locals and anyone um, and to create an access through to the river as well and actually try and regenerate the Mendip Road Street into kind of a more pleasant access way. 
um, and then the grey is actually our, our residential buildings and the light green is a is a podium that will then host all of the parking that we're currently showing externally to the building so we, what we try, try to do is actually bring all of that internally to the building so you don't have those those spaces out in the public walkway um, and you can kind of see here on on the left hand side this is an artist's impression of what we are seeking to do and and actually really kind of bring some greenery back to Mendip Road um, and also some trees along York Road and kind of create a public plaza on the north side towards the river um, and really kind of restricting our footprint there and you can see so some of the images of that um, here on that's York Road uh, Mendip Road and the public plaza so actually creating kind of pocket parks within that walkway from York Road through to the river so people can, can sit and, and we're, we'll be creating some active frontages so actually they can um, kind of break out from the internal spaces as well. In terms of land use so what we're looking to do is um, retain the existing storage facility um, within two basement levels um, and also some within the podium uh, to ensure that we actually retain the existing use and then on the ground floor we would have uh, what Joe was speaking about earlier flexible office space um, in which we it has been designed so that the actual office units can can go from from very small units to actually quite large units so they'd be open to businesses and also private individuals seeking to start something up um, as well as a small cafe as well on that ground floor um, and then here you can see so we'd have the also our main lobbies to the residential along that road as well so along Mendip Road and a single access to that residential car park and loading bay that's under that podium so none of that is exposed to um, anyone on the site that's visiting etc and I think um, so in terms of the residential that we're proposing, we're actually looking to propose a co-living and built to rent scheme. Um, so it's actually a mixed use scheme. And the idea is that what we're looking to do for the site is actually create a kind of an ecosystem of various uses for a mixed use uh, scheme that would enable um, someone to kind of take on a co-living unit uh, as they start up, you know, a young professional um, and then uh, you know, kind of become part of this community that we're looking to create on site and then move to the build to rent in the future if, if they require a larger unit. Um, so actually really creating kind of and synchronizing all these various uses to, to try and create a sense of place and community on the site. Um, and then so we also have so the flexible office which Joe has mentioned and I think it's something that we think is quite important because although it's um, very much in a in a kind of ground floor location actually it it really helps link up the various uses so um, how the storage is used because it, the storage um, one thing about the storage that's interesting is that it's not solely used by private residentials but also by SMEs so it's a mixture of things that could be used by residents around the site but also you have this ability to, to manage businesses through it and, and with it um, and then we've we've been looking at kind of with our proposal for the site so we're looking at um, 302 uh, homes with a mix of co-living and residential and built to rent residential um, where we've looked at what those local economic benefits would be both in the construction stage and for the operational phase that you can see kind of here on the right hand side the infographic for that so um so you know so we'd have an estimate of 435 residents um and that would break have an expenditure um to the local area of 6.5 million um and you know and it would also have with creation of jobs on site, uh, in both in retail and also for the office spaces, um, and, and to really kind of understand how this development will boost uh, the local economy and, and help towards that, um, and, and to regenerate what is currently um, quite an inactive site. 
Um, and then in terms of the bill to rent, so you can kind of, uh, there's a little bit more detail here, which is um, we have the bill to rent. So uh, actually a, a, va a variation of units ranging from, from one bed through to three bed family homes. Um, so you can see that there's a mix. It's, it's not going to be solely um, for, for one bed apartments or small studios, but actually there's, there's a range of, of housing types. Um, and then again, with the co-living, we, we will also provide a range um, of sizes and, and then the, the facilities that then go with that, uh, both private and also the ones that are accessed by public. But for the, for the co-living, you know, we're, as part of the kind of um, typology of housing, there will also be uh, communal areas for, for flexible space and, and living and dining. Um, as well as, you know, their various storage and, and um, laundry facilities that we've been looking in and analysing. And then on the, on the podium level, we've actually been, um, this has been kind of progressed right from the beginning and, and really part of the scheme of, of this idea of actually creating a podium to hide what is currently creating a not very pleasant atmosphere on the site um, and, and also retain a, a kind of a sense of external um, amenity for the residents, but also, you know, with this green buffer on the south, create privacy for the Battersea Reach development as well. Um, and this, and also this space would enable people to, to have kind of um, yoga classes outside as well. So it's, it's been developed as we've gone through with a series of pocket spaces within that podium as it is very large. And then here you can see a ground floor plan with the York Road, Mendip Road and the river access here. And what we're trying to create and actually really pulling people through Mendip Road up to the river um, to increase also that footfall along this, this river walk and, and the businesses that are looking to, to you know, to capture um, more people along this river walk and, and really activate it as, um, you know, to as this, you know, as I think as soon as you pass Battersea Reach, then the, actually the connection from York Road to the river is very broken up. So we're hoping that this will help create that. Um, and you can see here, so actually in purple, where we have the offices, um, both to the north and south of the site, and then our um, lobbies, and then the cafe along Mendip Road, where you can have a breakout space. Um, and th this is a, a, a visual of what the, the ground floor plane um, we aim for it to look like with these kind of pocket spaces uh, that are, are break out as well from, from that. So that's, that kind of gives you an overview of what we're looking to create and achieve on the site. Um, so I think we can probably move on to any questions people might have. Marjan, I think you, were, you raised your hand. Yes, can I speak? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, hi, hi. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you very much. It was very interesting. Uh, can I just ask them if the uh, I guess you you have started all this um, planning way before the COVID nineteen uh, crisis, and considering now there has been a quite a lot of shift, people moving away from offices, and uh, we will um, have this pattern of working from home implemented to our lives uh, for very long time um, and lots of companies are actually noticing that they don't really need so much of the office space anymore have you have you got any like kind of the other plans for the spaces that now you have allocated to offices maybe for leisure which is uh, because i noticed through your talk you really um, really talked about cre bringing creativity to the area, bring a vibrancy to the area, bring a footfall to the area, and something which is gonna have a leisure usage, especially for young families, it would tick all these boxes for you. How's your take on shifting a bit of your planning here? So I take that one? I yes, go for it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, um, I feel like doing the COVID briefing here, I'm, I, mm -hmm. but I haven't got Chris Whitty or Patrick Balance with me, but um, um, I, I think you, you raised some good points. I think who knows what the office landscape will look like in the future. Um, we could have a long debate about 
office working, how that may may adapt and change in its very early days. I think I think it's fair to say there will be office. I think um, I think interestingly, I think more satellite offices are going to become even more appealing. Um, rather than necessarily um, wanting to go into the centre of city. And so sort of more local hubs, um, I, I can see appeal to people. And I, and I think there is still going to be very much a place for uh, people to set themselves up because not everyone has space at home to work, their family set up, uh, the way they run their teams. So I, I'm pretty sure it will change, but I think there will be a demand for office. And I think the sort of office space we provide here uh, it's not a it's not a large volume but it does play to a market that wants that flexibility for new starters and links to very much the way of businesses at the moment with internet storage deliveries so i i, I think very much this is going to be a robust i mean we have a lot of take up in these schemes we put up uh, our existing sites with office and i we, we, we at the moment wouldn't see that necessarily changing um and as you say, like any business, if, if that starts to go, we, need, we would need to think about flexible use of that space uh, in the future. But for now, we still think there's a strong business case for this sort of uh, space to be provided. Um, it's not vast, but it does very much link in with storage. And there may be people, obviously, in the build to rent and, and, and the residential around who, who want somewhere to go and uh, work uh, nearby without going into the centre of town. Uh, I hope that is helpful. Uh, Joe, I think we have, um, I can see here that Earl doesn't have a, a microphone, so he's asked a question to see if, um, so he says his company has been at Battersea Reach, Access Battersea, for 13 years. Why have we not been informed or kept up to date about this new development? When will the work start and when will we be asked to vacate? So I think that a few people might be wondering that, so I think it might yeah, be a good Yeah, so, so um Part of the challenge with this site is we've been working on this for three years and uh, getting through planning and getting the schemes uh, agreed with the council, with the GLA uh, and, and making it provide the right sort of design is a long term thing. So it's, it's quite difficult to know when to start consulting. And I, and I guess it's only been recent, fairly recently that it sort of crystallised around a development that we think is supported. Um, and so, yes, um, I'm sorry if that feels like it's late in the day. Um, what I would say is that um, we uh, are now consulting with people. We've been doing that as we've, the scheme has now come to a sort of the shape it is. It's gone through many iterations over many years. Um, and we've now at a place where we think we've got broad support generally. Um, and now we're following up with the consultation. Secondly, um, for existing users we will give as much advance notice as we can um, and do all we can to make sure we support businesses in lo relocating their storage to um, other access storage sites so there's a number in the vicinity be it Wandsworth, uh, Chelsea and so we will need to start engaging with you I guess it's difficult for us to start want to start that when we we didn't have any confidence or certainty around the, the timeline um, so at the moment, as I say, if we can submit this scheme in the autumn, you're talking four to four months to six months to get some sort of um, pl plan planning approval. Um, and then and then you, you do much more design and, and procurement with contractors. So so we're talking a year and a half uh, at, at best before um, we would start on site. But but obviously um, would be my my gut feel at the moment. Um, but obviously we'll let people know as soon as we, we have clearer plans as a much advanced warning as possible. Thank you for that, Joe. Uh, apologies, everyone. I, um, I started off introducing the Q&A session and realized my um, microphone was on mute. So Carlotta picked up. So thank you very much for that, Carlotta. Jonathan Price, I think you were first to uh, say you wanted to ask a question and then I'll move to Enley Taylor. So. Jonathan, I'm just going to uh, unmute you. In fact, you are unmuted. Would you like to ask a question? Um, yeah, I think that uh, my question was actually largely answered in the previous statement about timeline. We've been based at, um, at the access site for, I think it was 16 years storage and currently 14 years as an office there. But no, thank you. I think that this is, for, for me as a business, it's the timeline. Um, it's fairly critical running an events business 
and we need to know when this is going to happen how we can get around it and um, what the alternatives are with uh, office and and storage um, but i think 18 months um gives us something to work towards so thank you for the for the answer to my now question thank you very much for that for that jonathan um just having worked for access i can tell you that uh, and working with other developers there is a huge uh, consultation process that goes before these schemes um, but when it does start getting implemented uh, they do keep existing tenants um, and storage holders very well informed and I've been involved in in helping to relocate and move people uh, so I'm sure you will be catered for thank you for that uh, Enli can I unmute you and let you ask your question thank you very much indeed uh, Steve yes um, very interesting presentation um, I'm, I'm really interested in, in this development because uh, I own the uh, nursery school that's um, in Ensign House that um, overlooks, well, not quite overlooking, but looks at uh, the, ac the current access uh, storage unit, which is um, not a very pleasant sight at the moment, um, just a big uh, blank <laughs> industrial <laughs> wall. <laughs> um, so I'm quite keen that you know and pleased to see that something's going to be done about that to make it more attractive but um i, I noticed in your presentation you haven't actually shown uh, um you know what what the view will be from ensign house that side of of of, of the uh, of, of your new new development um, yes do you um, is that possible at all to, to show that uh yes we can we can send you something after after this presentation but i was just wondering so in terms of um your um nursery facility is that on the north side of the of our site um well i'm not too sure is it um i can just share the share kind is of it, you've, shown, you've shown the street side it's opposite to the street side obviously so um i think the, it might be helpful just to see something here because i'd be interested to know um here so where where are you? Are you around yeah, here? That's, that's, no, 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 I, I am um, here. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So exactly. So I think this is so this boundary here is something that we're we're looking to develop. But what we've definitely done is, as you can see here, we've pulled the development back from our boundary line. So this this is a public plaza. I think access through here i'm not sure um we'll be able to do no. it without getting the permissions no that, that's that's the nursery garden what you were exactly exactly so i think yeah. this this at uh, this boundary line here is something that would need to be discussed in further detail but as you can see you wouldn't have a building in front of you a big blank building in front of you anymore this would be no, uh, but, but, but we're going to have something are we going to have some sort of wall some sort of structure there uh, yes, yeah, so that so that so that needs to be that will we'll need to define exactly what the boundary will be for that, um, so we can give you further detail. Um, yeah, because um, your podium is going to be above that, isn't it? I think. Yes, yeah, so our podium is pulled back completely, so you can see here just because it might be helpful in reference that this is the existing building here line in grey, on the north, and actually we're pulling that back completely. So, so, so if you're so currently you're having, looking at a building, you'll be uh, looking at some. So we'll have part a garden and part um, building, I think. Exactly, and the uh, the current podium is within the same height as the existing building, so it wouldn't be any taller. Yeah, uh, mm. does that answer your question, Enli? Well, I, I look forward to seeing the actual, um, you know, picture at some stage. That should at some stage. As part of this process, obviously that you get the chance to have input and have your say as well. So uh, we'll, we'll keep you abreast of that. Yeah, I mean, uh, oh, sorry, there's a couple more things, though, regarding the, the whole uh, development. In terms of the, at the construction phase, um, you know, in terms of, obviously, I'm concerned about the this, this safety aspects of things. Um, with, with, with our playground being on, on the boundary, um, you know, n noise and, 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 and dust and so forth, I mean, I presume... Sorry. Shall I answer that one again? Yeah, yeah it's true. So yeah, um, of course, we're, we're just pulling together now a construction management plan that will go in with the planning submission. That, that, that will send, set out the general way that we will work, um, how the site will be built. Um, but, and, and it will talk about how we, we will very much need to get our contractors very much a considerate contractor, creating a, a community liaison, 
um, dealing with noise, dust, all, all the usual things a well-managed site should do, frankly. Uh, I, I think the important bit actually won't be that document for you. It will be further down the line when we get the contractor on board to go and talk specifics about how they can uh, make sure that these sort of things are, are managed because you know it's fundamental that um, uh, it's safe, it's dealing with noise, dust, etc., in a way that um, isn't a detriment to neighbours. So, um, yeah, that that will very much be dealt with down the line. We'll put an initial strategy in now, and you'll see that with the planning documents. But then that will just that will be given much more detail, and you'd appreciate you'd need a contractor on board who's actually going to do it um, to get that next level of real real detail and timings because that'd be the key thing. It won't be up against the boundary for the whole time. You know, they will start the podium and move away. So it, it's not as if they'll be working on your boundary, for example, I'll just give you an example for a three year build. It will be one of the, after you've done a basement, one of the earlier bits. So, so that's a level of detail, not for now, but um, yes, that will be something that will be addressed. So I'm presuming that they have some sort of sheeting um, going right. across. To yeah, they'll, they'll put all, you know, central London sites, that need very much all this thought through they'll they'll have um i would expect fully monoflexed along the side to that, that's like a um a material that provides a physical barrier uh, and all of these sort of things and um so yes um i can assure you it will be a very uh, well set up site and and managed and will liaise with you nearer the time so okay. and, and, and i presume that um when it's actually completed i mean the other question i would have is uh issues to do with light but i presume you, you're stepping back so i suppose that that will probably um, well, your, i'll be even is, better than what we have now i would imagine <laughs> yes it, it'll be part it, improved as carl otter in, uh, stated by uh, moving the building back uh, there'll be more building behind it than you've had before um so it, you know I think your immediate outlook will be significantly improved by the looks of it, looking at what Carlos has just explained, because um, that would be quite a green courtyard at half, half of that length that I think interfaces with your site. Okay, thank you. Henley, can I just ask you whilst you're on, you mentioned the, the boundary wall. Um, what would you like to see there, ideally? Well, I'd have to think about that, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks it's the like first time I've... <laughs> I've, we, we, I've seen the present, you know, presentation. So oh, right. it'd be good. To, it'd be good to make it a green wall, wouldn't it, for you? You know, you yeah, build you good, build yeah. a new wall, put a trellis on it with greenery, or I don't know. You, you want to enliven it and make it feel warmer, don't you? So I think yeah, yeah, we yeah. Can, we could work with you to look at something to be yeah. done. We've got landscape designers, so I'm sure we can yeah. have a chat with you. But, but also, I'm not even sure it's my wall. Actually, I think it might be better to reach his wall. <laughs> wall, yeah. and I'm sure the residents would have something to say as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, your, your, for your support of what we need to do on it with Battersea Reach, the owners will be helpful at the right time, won't it? Yeah, of course. Thank you very much, Enli. Um, so, Marjan, you have your hand raised. I'm just going to unmute you again. If I understood uh, correctly, when Carlotta was explaining, answering the question of uh, Enli about, is my understanding correct to think there is a space that you still haven't made up your mind what you're going to do with that space within your development. Is that right? Marjan is talking about the space at the end that's going to overlook uh, Enley's uh, nursery, which is a, a, a park a at the moment. Plaza. And, and uh, yeah, I guess Marjan, you're going to ask, could we have a swimming pool there? <laughs> yeah, actually, I was going to, I was going to ask how, how big is that space and whether part of your development, you would like to consider adding um something that is going to definitely add into your community usage and vibrancy to your development like a swimming pool um i think that the the the, the space for a swimming pool is would be quite limited so it'd be quite a small swimming pool and i think that at the moment that space is allocated as a public plaza that's directly facing the offices to the north that is kind of envisioned to to be breakout space and and allow people to sit outside um, as part of those spaces and also create kind of you know potentially in the future that could be used to have host an event for for those offices or, or not so it's more of a flexible space mm -hmm. yeah thank you for that marjan um joe i wonder if you could just talk a little bit about um how 
the development will interact with uh, local businesses uh, because there, you know, there will be opportunities as the development goes up and then post development uh, for small partnerships and synergies and, and using local businesses. At some point, we're going to set up a website uh, for this development and we can create a, um, I guess, a forum we're thinking about where we can uh, liaise with local businesses, deal with any questions. Um, um, we can arrange meetings on the site nearer the time. Um, we, we are contemplating uh, how, how we exhibit the, the, the scheme at some point. I think we'll start to ratchet that up after this, really. This was a sort of, as we say, we're in the early throes of doing this. And um, it, it, we, haven't, we haven't gone to the next stage of beyond how we would then engage with the, the businesses at the moment. We're trying to get opinions now, get their feedback as we look at the scheme we're putting in for planning. Um, but I think we would very much start to, to engage and market and, and, and uh, with, the, with the businesses thereafter. Have you, have you got any thoughts your, your product, you're pointing me down the line of, Steve? No. That... Yeah, no, absolutely. It's just that um, the Chamber is all about getting local businesses into the supply chain. An awful lot of peripheral work that comes up in a development like pest control, um, catering on site, etc., and then post development, you know, doing joint events with the community, being involved in the Battersea Reach uh, business community, uh, stuff like that. So I was just wondering uh, for your views on that, really, which I think you've covered. Yeah, yeah, but there's some good points, and I, I, I think what I would say is after this, and I think further down the line, we 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 should keep communicating with yourself and starting to pull this stuff in, actually, um, with your insight into how we will will engage with the businesses and. I'm very much try and deal with that because I think it's in our interest and yours to to try and yeah provide look for services that the local businesses can provide that's got to be the way we try and do it um, as well as providing facilities but actually be it cleaning be it um, things you've just mentioned and even during construction you know if there's businesses here that provide certain things for construction I think we want to the supply chain so we'll, we will have a supply chain strategy and, and that will be the other part of it, which will be looking at local businesses to be part of the supply chain from, um, I guess, from construction, then through to operation of the building thereafter. So it will need to cover that full life cycle of the building. Um, and I think very much we, we should put something together and we will be for, for that. Lovely. Uh, has anyone got any more questions? I'm not seeing any hands raised. Steve? Oh, great. Thank you. Um, hi everyone, uh, thanks very much for a great presentation. Um, you, we, uh, we are Andmore Planning Limited and we're planning consultants uh, working on behalf of Landmark Estates who owns Chatfield Court, which is the building to the north. Um, I just wanted to um, just emphasise everything that, that Joe and Carlotta have been saying today, which is uh, they have been approaching our architects and, and our clients uh, in relation to the boundary with our building to the north. Uh, there's, there's a large tree there. Um, there's quite a, a large, ugly brick wall, uh, which has been landlocked for, for many years since Battersea Reach or formerly Gargoyle Wharf uh, was developed all those years ago. So, so our client is very much looking forward to unlocking this and, uh, and working with you guys to, uh, to actually come up with a public plaza that works for, for your site, for our site and the wider Chatfield Mendip Road area. So it's great to be involved in those discussions at this stage. Um, and we look forward to um, yeah, sharing, um, uh, sharing designs for actually how our entrance could look out onto your plaza and work, work brilliantly for everyone. Thank you, Stephen. That's, um, that's, that's helpful. And yes, you're right. We have been engaging with you and um, we'll continue to do that because I think it will completely transform that north end of the site um, for, for, the, for everyone who wants to walk through and just link up to that, the river and that fantastic route we have in this part of the world. Um, to make it an improved environment for just for, for the for the residents and the businesses is is, is, is got to be a good thing, and for your development next door. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Stephen. You make a great point there. I think there are a lot of synergies between the developments and the combined effect uh, on the sort of uh, productivity that's going to come into the area as a result of that will be quite. Um, quite exciting for the, the existing businesses there. It's also, I guess, you know, um, it's the closest route in from Clapham Junction, which is one of the main stations over there. 
And if you think about all the developments at Battersea Power Station, uh, it's, a nice, it's a nice entrance into Battersea Reach because the particular sites in question are quite run down, dusty, uh, industrial. So uh, I think it'll benefit in, in lots of ways. Um, if there aren't any more questions, I think it's probably time to wrap up this presentation. And I'll ask uh, Joe and Carlotta to just make some final remarks. Steve, um, just be, Steve, just before you do that, there is a question I think outstanding from Jonathan Price about the the buildings on the other side of Mendip Road. Yeah, it just says, what about the buildings to the east, the old Criterion Auction building and the buildings used to store cars? What's happening in this area? Will redevelopment be done at the same time? Just maybe we could just address that before you, we, yeah, we wind that, up. Yeah, that's, that's the development that Stephen's talking about. Let me unmute Stephen to... Uh, are you talking about, is this, um, Carl Ottenweiner, is this the same that the collective scheme that's got approved on the yeah. other side of the Mendip? Yes, yeah, so I think there's, there's several buildings that have gone through planning and um, have, have been approved on the opposite side of Mendip Road, um, one of which is the collective and then the other one, which I think is the old Criterion building, and I think you're referring to whether there's a car storage. Um, they... I don't th we we can't be you know certain as to if they'll be redeveloped or not at the same time as they're not part of our site or our application um but of, obviously it's our hope that that they all do get redeveloped and and that the whole area gets regenerated um as much as possible um but i th i believe they do have planning approved so um i don't see why they wouldn't go ahead with it Stephen Burrell, did you want to make any comments? No, other than, yeah, we've already gone through planning. Uh, we have planning approval for four additional floors on top of Chatfield Court, um, which is the building immediately to the north uh, next to the big tree, uh, the big plane tree. So uh, so we, we've already got planning for that and uh, we have already started on site um, and we're looking at some some minor changes to the entrance feature at the uh, at the ground floor. Hence our discussions um, positively going forward with uh, with these guys access sto uh, storage um, to make it make it look so much better. So yeah, we're 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 cracking on as well. Jonathan Price, can I just unmute you to ask your question? Hey, um, yeah, hi. So um, just um, obviously we are we've been heavily based to access for for sixteen years or so. Um, if um, obviously this this goes ahead, which you know we. Uh, in principle, do not oppose. Um, how long is the works going to take? We're talking one year, eighteen months. I mean, as a business, we're going to have to relocate all our storage and our offices. Um, and we just need to know really how long the works will go on for, so we can find somewhere to go temporarily, whether it be with a, another access uh, site in the area or indeed somewhere else. Thanks. Thank you, Jonathan. So it um, it's quite a big development, and it's got basement, so it's. Um, I'm not going to um, say any, give you a short term. So it's a it's a three it's a it's a overall beginning to end is around it's about a three year complete period. That said, the the storage part of it, which is the basement and ground floor there with the access into it, is one of the first bits that's completed. So the whole development is a three year approximately three years start to finish with the full residential so that you've got th you know two, 200 to 300 units of co-living and build to rent however the, the storage is being at the ground is done first and we will be looking at phasing and how quickly we can get people back in whilst we're finishing off the resi above so I'm afraid I can't give you an exact answer but I, I would assume a couple of years is, is, is a minimum realistic expectation to give you a, an idea lovely uh so thank you very much um for the questions carlotta joe would you just like to make any closing remarks carlotta to you first sorry i was muted um no i'd just like to thank everyone for attending and i hope you know that you like the presentation and if you've got any questions that, and forward them to steve then we're you know we're more than happy to to answer those in the future lovely and joe over to you yeah um so um, pleased to see so many people interested so thank you all for for joining it today um, so hopefully uh, we've given you um, the info you require any other stuff as Carlotta has just said please please direct um, questions through I guess Steve through you is that the best route yeah more than happy to take questions and, and pass it on to you and then help yeah. you to set up a forum later on and and noticing with M Martin um, on um, from polity on our side um, 
in terms of the other things we've got like a webinar does that should that be things that we just is there anything we need to just communicate to the to the guys and girls here now on, on what's coming up yeah i mean we are we are looking to do um a webinar um shortly in, in august um where we're going to try and publicize that to the wider community and the business community is more than welcome to to join that um so through steve we'll we'll give you the details on that so people can do that not normally um we've worked with uh Pracy for more than 10 years and our, our normal practice is always to come onto the site and do a public presentation and allow people to come along and do that face to face it's just obviously with the current restrictions under COVID-19 that we've we've not been able to do that um we would like still to try and do that and we're looking at that at the moment but you'll understand that with the, the situation being a bit fluid it's um it's it's difficult um but if equally we are able to do that before we submit the planning application as um joe has said in the autumn we'll also circulate details of that as well but in the first instance our, our plan is to do that that webinar which will be similar to this um uh, we'll give a presentation and, and, and do a Q&A to try and get that message across. We do have um, a microsite um, up and running at menditroad.info where you can actually use the form to put comments in. And we've had a lot of feedback already from residents and neighbours on that, which we've been responding to and picking up during the design process that Carl Otter and the team has been going through. So we have had a lot of feedback, a lot of issues, and um, it was great to hear that um, particular neighbour issue with a nursery today because that's a new thing that we can address uh, and, and pick up as part of the process and make sure that you know this is just the start of the dialogue of that, that process of dialogue um, it's, it's very very usual for us to talk to neighbours about boundary treatments and consult with them on construction process to make sure that they're fully aware of what's going on when it's going to happen how it's going to happen we obviously often get feedback where we can adjust construction processes i mean particularly for example we've worked with schools on the boundaries where you know there are particularly sensitive times that can be that can be uh, addressed so we're just keen to hear as much of that coming forward from neighbors and for anybody that's interested so we can respond accordingly this is going to be as has been said quite a long process so we're going to keep those channels open for anybody who wants to feed into that well, thanks Mark. Lovely. yeah so um just a question there from Jonathan, uh, how will you inform us of the webinars? Jonathan, we'll, we'll be working very closely with this team uh, and you will get information from uh, Wandsworth Chamber of Commerce. Uh, just in rounding up, I'd like to say that, you know, uh, for anyone that is concerned, um, developers and construction has changed a, an awful lot uh, over the years and now it is, it is pretty responsible there are huge restrictions and, uh, and guidelines to be followed, especially in London, and consultations are a huge uh, part of that. We've worked with a lot of the developers around the Nine Elms area to keep businesses informed, keep people informed, and we've attended meetings. I guess it's easier uh, to do it online, so we may have more of them, but we will do our best to keep you informed. But for today, I think, uh, you know, I think it was a very, very good presentation. Uh, I think there's a lot of scope uh, for the future. There are some concerns about obviously construction and how that affects businesses and residents, uh, but we will address those as we move forward. But thank you very much to the team from Access for taking the time to present this. And thank you very much for, to our attendees for coming along and asking the questions. It, it really does help. And it really is a genuine opportunity to have your say. So uh, I promise to keep you all in. Just say one thing, I, yeah. um, because often with developments, those um, it, it's also helpful if anyone wants to make comments supporting what what we're trying to do here. That, that's always helpful as well, um, um, because often those who who might write in are often more um, have their own issues with a scheme for a different reason. But for those who can see the benefits of it, it's always helpful to have some supporting voices from from the community and the business. Can I say thank you very, very much indeed, Steve, for putting all this together. And it's been incredibly helpful. And thank you very, very much indeed for all your hard work of coordinating this and sharing it so wonderfully well. Thank you very it's much. A, it's a pleasure. Uh, thank you for attending and taking part.